This is Amistrat wins me 97% of my ranked games. And in today's video, I'll be going over 13 different solo queue strats that you need for your ranked game. But first, let's go over that Azami strat that I just showed you. For the strat, firstly, you'll want an Azami barricade on the left side of the shelf, so you'll put your crosshair on the very top left of the shelf just like this, and throw your Kiba. The reason that you put it as far left as possible is because it creates this triangle right here that you can peek off of to get an angle on the doorway that's very hard for them to contest, but it can get you a lot of free kills. As you can see, these are my bullet holes here and here, so obviously you can shoot people from this crack, and it gets you a lot of free kills. A barrier that gets you just as many free kills is the one under the second wine bottle right here. Now the reason you don't put it any further to the left is because if you did, you wouldn't be able to fit in between the Azami and the wooden pillar right here. And as you can see, it's already a pretty tight fit, so anything more to the left would not allow you to rotate. This still, however, gives you that little triangle we were talking about earlier that you can pick off of to get free kills. As you can see, when I pull forward, my bullet holes are right here. So it still gives you a free angle, but it also allows you to rotate. I feel like it's the perfect Azami Barricade for this site. For your next barricade though, make your way into blue stairs. What you're going to do is throw your barricade onto this wooden chase just like this in the very center. This makes it to where they actually have to walk down blue stairs to knife your Azami barricade. And if you have barbed wire paired up with it, like at the top of the stairs right here, they'll make noise when they try to actually melee it, and they'll be slowed down. So you can just be sitting on blue stairs and peek and shoot their feet, and they can't actually see or shoot you back because there's a barrier in front of their face. Also, typically, you'll have a rotate right here. What you can do is put a head hole right here as well next to that rotate. And this head hole actually allows you to see and peek off of blue. And if you, I think you can put it a little bit more to the right. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you can actually see their feet when they come to melee your barricade, which is super powerful. So like overall, it's a really, really nice zombie barricade. But those three are really the only three that are mandatory. What I would do with your last two is keep replenishing these zombie barricades right here. But if they don't end up destroying those and they end up pushing the other side of the site, then I'd recommend that you put an zombie barricade on the snowmobile just like this. This barricade will make it to where you can sit behind here and play off of the wall, and it also allows your teammates to rotate safely without having to worry about the breach. You can also get the same amount of safety by putting the Azami barricade on this doorway instead. That way you're actually able to rotate from pillar using this doorway here without having to worry about getting shot from here. So either way, all of these Azami barricades are great. Pair that up with barbed wire on main stairs, and you have an amazing solo queue strategy that even your teammates can play off of. Unlike this cage strat where you don't need any teammates. Now to do that cage strat that I just showed you on screen, first you're going to come into Geisha and reinforce this wall. Then you'll put feet holes next to the wall. That way you or a teammate can play inside of drum and shoot anybody trying to hop in through the wall or hop in through the window. But with this cage strat, they shouldn't be hopping through the wall. That's because as cage, you're going to make your way downstairs. Then you're going to throw your cage claw in the top right of this ceiling right here. As you can clearly see, this cage claw effortlessly electrifies the geisha wall, while not being visible by the feet holes anywhere in sight for the attackers. Another wall that you need electrified is the T double wall for sight. If you want to do this again, come downstairs, and you'll throw your cage electric claw just about right here. This cage claw right here, as you can see, perfectly electrifies the two T walls, and they won't be able to see it or EMP it if they come all the way over here and try to EMP the wall. It's very nice. This strat is very easy to do and very, very new player friendly. Unlike this castle strat for top floor cafe, which actually requires a bit more brain power. To do this first, you need to ensure that the two red walls right here are reinforced. Luckily for you, a lot of solo queue players will do this immediately because of how default it is and how well known it is that you need these two walls reinforced. So you can honestly just reliably let your teammates do this step for you. Reinforcing this wall also allows you to get an accurate representation of where you should be shotgunning to get the pixel angle that I'm about to show you. To do this, just shoot slightly above the reinforcement and try to angle it diagonally, that way you don't break the hatch on the other side. Now the top of the red wall should look like this, with a slight white rectangle above the wall. If I come over here and I open the hatch just like this, now it's a lot easier to see the angle that I'm talking about. You can clearly see anybody that's on top of the hatch looking at the red wall, which happens every single round if they bring an ace to try to get the wall open. Now, you can really do this with anybody, but you want to be doing this with castle because there's some castle barricades that you need to put down. The first of which being on the east stage rappel just like this, and the second of which being on the south stage rappel just like this. 
These two castle barricades ensure that nobody is able to shoot you whenever you're playing inside of piano to get angles onto the hatch. Or if they try to and they break the castle barricade, you'll at least get an audio cue that warns you that they're about to get the angle on you. Another good castle barricade that's optional is the one on this doorway just like this. It makes it to where they won't be able to escape through the doorway and peek anybody playing inside of cocktail so that you can just hold the breach angle right here and they have nowhere else to go. Although chances are if you're playing in pan- Although chances are if you're playing in piano and you're playing inside of pixel, you need a castle barricade on this window right here so they don't get on it and shoot you whenever you're rotating back to sight. Which is where you're going to put your final castle barricade, on the white stairs window. This not only ensures that they can't get an angle on you unless you know about it, but it also makes it to where if your roamers are coming back to sight, they won't get shot by the window. So it's very solo queue friendly because it also helps out your teammates. Not only can your teammates walk up this window, but so can your enemies, which is why I recommend that your first proximity alarm actually goes on the white stairs right about here. This will alert you if anybody's walking up the white stairs so that really nobody can get on the angle whenever you're rotating back to sight unless you know about it. Now because of the angle that you have on the red hatch, you don't really need information for that hatch. But you do need information for this hatch, which is why I recommend the second proximity alarm you place be on the underside of this hatch specifically. That way, if you're playing inside of piano or your teammates playing inside of the cigar box, both of you will be able to be notified when someone is dropping this hatch. So, if you can't tell, this strat heavily, heavily relies on information. Just like this top floor Oregon strat for Alibi. Now with Alibi, your main objective is holding armory. The reason that you do this is because secretly holding armory also gives you master control. How do you do this? Well, in order to do this, you need head holes all along this wall and all along this wall. Now, as you can see, with both of these pairs of head holes, you sitting in armory easily allows you to hold master control with a new angle, so if they walk in the master door or they try to walk in the closet, you can easily spray them down. The only issue is that they're easily able to drone you out, which is where the observation blockers come in. If you put an observation blocker on this set of head holes here, and an observation blocker on these set of head holes here, now, as you can see, both of these observation blockers will block any drones from being able to see through any set of head holes, which is great for you. If you pair this up with an alibi clone behind the observation blocker, they can't drone out the alibi clone. So chances are when they open this barricade and they see the clone, they're going to shoot it. And as alibi, you can be sitting behind one or let's say even two alibi clones and swing off of the information they provide, getting a free kill because you'll have pings on them. If you put a third alibi clone on this window, now it makes it completely impossible for them to sneak up through this window to kill you in armory, which a lot of players on attack will do if they're smart. The only other place you could get droned out is the main stairs, so you can put a second observation blocker for the door, just like this, which will make it to where if they have any drones on main stairs, the drones won't be able to see you, which is perfect for this strategy. As you can see, this strat is very good if you have great gun skill. Unlike this Aruni strat for Clubhouse Basement, which any player can use. Now as Aruni, her hand allows her to break soft surfaces with ease, which means you as Aruni should be making the site rotate. Put one for blue put one in between the two sites, and then you want to put feet holes for armory, with optional head holes for the church wall. Once you've done all of the default holes, where do you set your Aruni gates? The first one I recommend is the right side of the kitchen hatch here. When you put it on the right side, it gets you to where the Aruni gate is the closest to you, allowing you to activate it the easiest if it gets deactivated. The second Aruni gate I recommend is putting it on the church door. This makes it to where if they drop Moto, they have to burn utility to go through this door, and that happens pretty late into the round, so chances are they'll just run through it, which is good. The third Aruni gate I recommend is for the main double door. This is because people love to run, sprint, or even sneak down this double door into church without people knowing, so this Aruni gate will slow them down and give your team an audio cue for when they do this. Now, these Aruni gates are outstanding, but this isn't where the strat actually resides. Because as Aruni, you're going to be playing for generator, which means you need the wall reinforced next to your rotate. Then as Aruni, pull out your DMR and put a hole on the top left of the wall next to the reinforcement just like this. Then use her punch to break out the chairs just like this and hop on top of the table. Once you're on the table, you can clearly see a long line of sight onto anybody on the blue staircase. 
To show you this, as you can see, my bullet holes that I just shot on the wall are right here. So you can shoot them when they're standing and when they're crouched. And as you can see from the attacker's POV, this is what it looks like. It's a pretty tight angle, and most of the time the attackers will have their crosshair super down low. So it's really hard for them to adjust to snap to you here, which most players don't even know to do because they've never seen this angle before. If you're running DMR on a Rooney and you're holding a tight angle like this, chances are you will win that gunfight 9 times out of 10, which is why this solo queue strat is so good even if you have bad gun skill. This frost strat for kitchen and cafe is even simpler though. As frost, your first frost mat is going to be in the coat check closet right below this window right here. This frost trap ensures that if anybody tries to hop in the coat check window to get control of it, they will hit a frost mat which you can easily capitalize off of. If you pair this up with the common head holes that are typically on the right or left side of this wall, it makes it to where if someone's sitting inside of kitchen, they can easily capitalize off of that kill. Another common vault location is below this double window right here, which you can easily put a frost mat below if you don't have a deployable shield. But even if you do have a deployable shield, you can just put it behind the frost mat right here, which is typically where the shield is anyways. And if they see a shield here, they're not going to expect a frost mat to be there, so it works out even better. Now the last place you can put your frost mat is completely optional, and there's three places you can do it. You can either have it right here next to the doorway, which is really good because people when they're attacking will just hug the left side here to get the plant down. Or you can put it right next to the kitchen wall right here, because as you can see with my shotgun, I've opened up a majority of the wall to simulate what an ace breach would look like, and whenever they vault in the ace breach, they would hit a frost mat, so it's not a bad place either. Or the third and honestly best frost mat position that I could think of is the one below the bakery window right here. This might get shot out a lot because if they know you have a frost, they're just going to pre-fire the bottom of this window, but it's still pretty good nonetheless if you don't get spotted. Now, we've been talking about nothing but defensive strats. So let's go over this attacking Maverick strat for Big Tower. Now, as Maverick, as you can see, I'm in Big Tower right now on the T2 side. What you'd need to do is repel up to one of these windows, drone out T3, drone out T2, and drone out T1. But I'll save you the trouble of having to look at me do that. Instead, fast forward to where you have these two walls reinforced. As Maverick, what you would do is you'd put holes right here on the bottom side of the left wall just like this. What this does is it makes it to where if you vault over right here and you come to the bottom of the stairs, you can get an angle onto anybody inside of Attic from the staircase right here, which is nice for you because it's far enough away from the feet holes to where you won't get easily pre-fired, but it's still a good enough angle to where you can shoot a lot of potentially dangerous angles. If you want to as well, you can make optional head holes to distract them whenever they do peek so you can get a free kill from the feet holes, but that's besides the point because your next step is just going to be making yourself on the rotate or on the right side, right about... Oh, I thought I could do it in one canister here. Right about here. That should do the trick. Now that you've made yourself a rotate here, and you've already kind of pressured people with these two angles that you created in the first place, then you can use your flash grenade initially to take control of upper attic, just like this, and then hold the angle on the door, get a quick peek on the rotate, and then you can throw a second flash grenade just like this. Not through the rotate, but on the rotate. That way, the people on the door here also get flashed, and then you can drop contest angles however you need to. Maybe use a, another flash grenade through the doorway or another one through the rotate here. And then now, you've just completely taken control of Attic just because you had Maverick and some flash grenades, which is really, really good, and it's something that's easily doable in solo queue. An even easier strat, though, is the zero strat for theme park. This strat specifically is if you're pushing the top floor. It doesn't matter which objective because I'll give you two cameras for each. Let's just say, for example, though, you're pushing vault and initiation. What you'll do as zero, then, is you'll push downstairs first after shooting that default camera, droning out all of maintenance and gong while you're here. Then, get on your drone and drone out top dragon, because you want to make sure that all your angles are clear so that you can pull out your camera and shoot the first zero camera which, by the way, is going to go exactly right here. That zero camera, right there, gives you an angle onto bottom and top dragon, also allowing you to zap any utility that could be giving the enemies information, like that default camera or any Valkyrie cameras, observation blockers, alibi clones, whatever it may be. It can also see into initiation, which is pretty cool, and the double door right here, so it's a great information camera. Once you've shot your camera onto the ceiling just like that, you can use all of that information to make sure top dragon is clear, and to make sure the hallway is clear, to then get in position to shoot your second zero camera. The zero camera in question is going to go into the main lobby just like this. This zero camera gives you an angle into the main lobby, a reception, whatever you call this little room right here. It's great because there's typically a rotate right here that you can get information on, as well as information into initiation. The third zero camera, you're going to shoot into the cache wall. 
What this does is it allows you to clear cash, but if you flip it, it also allows you to shoot anybody that's in vault. Now, if this wall is reinforced, then what you can do is you can just quickly shoot it on the left side, or you can maybe pre-fire and then shoot it into, you know, bathroom or into the actual site. Doesn't matter, as long as you get information into vault with a zero camera, that should be fine. Once you have this information though, you can reliably get the bomb down right behind this chair or maybe behind this desk right here and it should be a free round win. I don't like doing it behind this desk though because they have a rotate typically right here so I'll do it behind this desk but those three zero cameras should allow you to get here pretty easily. Now, like I said, I'd be giving you a camera for both sites. So if you're pushing up here, I definitely recommend that you push from bottom arcade first with the zero camera being somewhere on the top of this UFO just like this. This zero camera will give you all of the information for top and bottom arcade, allowing you to shoot this default camera in the process. It also makes it to where it's pretty hard to spot. That kind of just looks like the anchor for the UFO. It doesn't look like a zero camera, so there's that as well. It's pretty easy to do in solo queue and you don't need to rely on your teammates, which is not the case for this Capitao strat when attacking rafters. Now, the thing with attacking rafters in specific is you really need to wait for this wall to get open. That way, there's an extra angle that they have to worry about in rafters whenever you're trying to take it away from them. Which is why this strat kind of relies on your teammates having a brain. But in solo queue, even your teammates are able to get this wall open consistently, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Because your job as Capitao is to get these walls open that are typically reinforced. You can do this by putting one on the top right of the wall when repelling, just like this. And once it explodes, you can easily get an angle onto anybody sitting in R90 or on the window for rafters. You're also able to sit here and shoot the default camera as well if it's not already broken. Then you'll get the bottom left as low as you can go just like this. The reason you want to put it low is so you don't have to vault through it and you can just crouch through it. As you can see, I can crouch through this breach, I don't have to vault through it. Now, once they've gotten the wall open, pull out your Capitao crossbow, and then shoot a firebolt on the right just like this, and on the left just like this. The fire should fall from your dart, making it to where anybody sitting in your rafters will be on fire, which will make them move, in turn allowing your people on the wall to kill them, the people on the door to kill them, or you in bottom garage to easily kill them. There's a very short window in which you can do this, but if you have teammates that aren't absolute troglodytes, it should be easy. Now that you or your teammates have effectively taken rafters, it's time to go in for CC. Now a huge issue with planting inside of CC on the bomb is that they can easily come in through cash from this doorway to contest the people on the wall to deny the plant. If you don't want them to be able to do this, then you as Capital, once you've taken rafters, can get on the plat wall and shoot a smoke grenade at the top of the ceiling just like this. Now because smokes stick to whatever they touch, this smoke will stick to the ceiling, and if you walk in it, it actually blurs your vision. So you won't be able to see anything as a defender if a Capitao does the smoke. It's absolutely great. But as an attacker on the wall, you can still clearly see them, even though they clearly can't see you when they peek the smoke. So it's a very, very good smoke because it catches them off guard and allows you to see them when they can't see you. Although I will say it is a pretty team-heavy solo queue strat which is not at all the case for this gridlock strat when attacking top floor villa. As gridlock, make sure that you repel up to the master balcony, because for this, you're going to be pushing back site in master in order to take control of the site that's usually an aviator in games. What you'll do is shotgun open the closet window, just like this, or knife it open, it doesn't really matter, and then throw a drone in here. Drone out all of closet, all of master, all of bathroom, and yes, even the bathtub, and then drone out all of master. The only thing really next that you have to worry about is the brick door here. Once you've droned out everything that I've told you to drone out, then throw a gridlock track onto the astro stairs just like this. Once you shoot this default camera, these gridlock tracks will automatically activate, making it to where they have to shoot one, two, three, four, five gridlock tracks if they want to safely and slowly contest you on the flank, which is a lot of time for you to get the audio cue that they're flanking you. Then once you've done this, make sure that you drone out all of statue, brick, make sure that you drone out all of trophy. Because the next step is that you're going to go inside of boar or wolf, whatever you call this room, and then you're going to throw gridlock tracks onto the red stairs from that room and it should land right about here. These gridlock tracks here will make it to where nobody can push from red stairs. Now a lot of people might ask, why don't you just do this with Nomad? That's because if you put a Nomad air jab right here, they can easily just shoot it from the basement. If you put one on the staircase, they can easily shoot it from the left side here. 
If you put one at the top of the staircase, they can easily shoot it, or they can easily get an angle on you without actually having to go up the staircase and trigger the air jab. So for this site specifically, gridlock is just better. Once you're here though, you have two options. You can either make a 90 push and use your gridlock tracks on main stairs to make it to where they can't flank you and get a plant into bar, or you could do the more popular option that your teammates will probably default to, which is the aviator push. You can throw gridlock tracks on the study door just like this to make sure that nobody gets an angle on you when you plant behind the vault door, and you can throw gridlock tracks right here as well so that nobody can flank you from vault or the rotate, and you can pair this up with smokes right in front of you right here as well to make it way easier for you to get the bomb down right here. It's a very nice strat, and the best part about the strat is that it's reversible. So if you want to do the strat for attacking statue and trophy, you can just put a gridlock track on main stairs. Put a gridlock track on red stairs and save the other two gridlock tracks for sight if you want to plant in statue, putting one on this doorway and putting one on this doorway. It works for every single site on the top floor. This strat heavily relies on the fact that you bring smoke grenades on gridlock though, which is not at all the case for this A strat when attacking layer. Now I know this map is new and confusing, even the spawn points is just overwhelming, so you know I had to make a strat for my new players out there. As Ace, get onto the roof at the highest point, and then you're going to vault over the roof onto this L-shaped balcony just like this. Once you're here, you'll find a wall right here, which is actually the main wall that attackers use to get into the upstairs site. What you'll do here is you'll put a crouch height Ace breach right here, and then you'll put a high head hole Ace breach just like this and then you're going to shoot out the bottom portion of that ace charge. What these two ace charges allow you to do is get an angle on these head holes that are typically right here with these head holes that you put down while also allowing you to crouch behind the breach if you don't want to be exposed to these head holes and peek them. Putting a crouch height breach right here also allows you to be able to sprint across to here and get a plant down, which is a lot easier than you'd think because unless they have a rotate here, a lot of people just don't even contest this. You can drone it up beforehand or use a smoke grenade on this double door too, so a lot of the times it's just a free plant. If you want to make it even faster and easier to go that fast, you can use your third ace breach on the top of the one that you made to make it crouching, and now it's not a crouching breach anymore. It's a head height sprintable breach that you can sprint through to get the bomb down. Very easy to do, and as long as you do like a lion scan or a doka bee claw beforehand, or you drone it or smoke it, you can actually get in this corner for absolutely free. Your only issue now are these head holes, but hopefully you got a kill or you at least pressured them off of these head holes, or your teammates pushed the side of the building to the right over there, which they typically do, so these head holes won't become an issue for you anymore. And because your teammates will typically push over here, this is actually still pretty solo queue friendly. Once you've planted right here, the round's pretty much cut out for you. You can optionally put a claymore right here with a claymore behind it, that way if they shoot this one, it'll activate the next one and they'll die to it, so either way, it's a pretty free round to win. Bringing it back to the defense though, let's go over this mute shotgun strat for top floor cafe. As mute when you spawn in, you first want to use your shotgun to help your team. What I'll do is I'll shoot out this bar one right here. That way if they try to plant behind this bar, it's a lot harder for them to do that because these holes allow your teammates inside of cocktail to easily shoot them. Putting holes right here for this bar plant as well is doing the exact same thing. It just makes it to where people inside of freezer can shoot them when they plant behind the bar. Then, if you're in a higher elo, you can also put feet holes on this wall as well that your teammates can play, especially if you have an Azami or a Maestro, they love these feet holes. And then if your teammates are that bad, you can also be the one that makes the rotates, one on the right side of this freezer wall here, and a vaultable one on the left side of this bathroom wall right here. Either way, you need these holes. If your teammates also, for some reason, didn't make the head holes for bathroom, you can put head holes for bathroom as well. You can put it on the right side, with a reinforcement on the left, although it does expose your rotate, or you can put head holes on the left side with a reinforcement on the right, although it does expose your hallway. Either way, you gotta pick your poison here. Personally though, I like putting a reinforcement right here so I can actually use the rotate. Some people like the opposite. Doesn't really matter to me as long as you just pick one. Now in terms of site setup, you really only have to do one more thing, which is make sure that these walls are reinforced. Like I said earlier though, typically your teammates will do this, so don't really worry about it. If these two walls are reinforced, your first mute jammer is going to go on the left side of this wall, and make sure it's pointing towards the window, that way they can't get on the window and shoot the little arms of it to destroy your mute jammer. Your second mute jammer is actually going to go on the very rightmost side of this drone hole just like this. Not only does it block the drone hole and block the hallway here, but it also makes it to where if they want to get open this wall, that mute jammer will protect this side of the wall, so now they can't get open either of these walls if they're playing ace. Now this mute jammer does partially cover this hallway, but it doesn't cover the right side, which is where our next mute jammer in the right side of the cigar box will do. 
These two mute gemmers here create a funnel to where they can't actually drone at all through this hallway, and they can't drone you through this door. The only other place they can drone you from is from this hallway, but if you put a mute gemmer on the left side of it just like this, they can't shoot this from the new hatch, and they can't shoot it from skylight. So this is your final mute jammer. Now as mute, where are you playing and what are you doing? Well, what you'll do is you'll actually put a shotgun hole on the right side of the cigar box like this. This allows you to ADS with your shotgun, and anybody that drops the hatch, you can easily and reliably one pump down. Yes, even three armors, you will consistently down them with one pump when they drop the hatch. If you miss, or if there's people that came up from red stairs that you didn't get to shotgun, you can use your nitro cell like this. This nitro cell right here will reliably kill anybody that is down here. Even if they're not downed or if they're at full HP, this nitro cell usually will kill anybody that's in this room. So you have a complete failsafe as to getting kills on red stairs. Even if they drone you out somehow with all these mute jammers here and they know that you're there, you can leave and then play close to the doorway and swing. Your only worry is the new hatch, but even then when they drop that, you can swing here. So this strat is really good if you like using shotguns. If SMGs are more your style though, then you need to try out this Valkyrie strat for CC and cash on Clubhouse. Now, first and foremost, you need a Valkyrie camera for rafters, which is pretty obvious because a lot of people do it. But where do you put it? There's so many different options. Well, one, you can put it in the top corner right here behind the pipes, but it's a little tricky to get that line up down. So instead, what I recommend you do is you look at these black pipes here and throw it slightly to the right side of those pipes. This Valkyrie camera right here, if you're an attacker, is actually impossible to see unless you get all the way out to right here, which by then, you're going to be ADS at the door, the window, all of rafters, so you're never going to look up there because you don't have the luxury of being able to do that. But if you get on the Valkyrie camera, you can still pretty clearly see the door and anybody that walks in. You can also see bottom garage, top rafters, the window, the heddles, bottom garage, on the doorway, oil pit, so every single possible angle that attackers could be using, you can see on this Valkyrie camera, which is why it's so great. Secondly, you need a Valkyrie camera for construction. What I like to do is put it on this light bulb directly, just like this. Now, as you can see, because it's on a light bulb, that Valkyrie camera appears to be white. So when people are looking for the Valkyrie camera, they're just going to assume that that's the actual light bulb. They're never going to assume that that's a Valkyrie camera, which is why it never gets found in my ranked game. When you get on this Valkyrie camera, though, you can pretty clearly see all of construction. You can see the wall, the lodgy wall, the window, the actual site wall and even anybody walking in from the master door. It's a great camera. The final place that can come from is red stairs, which is why I recommend that you throw a Valkyrie camera right in between the breaker and the switches, just like this. This Valkyrie camera can see all of top and bottom red, but more importantly, it can see anybody walking in from the breach into CC trying to get the plant down. Also from an attacker's POV, you're gonna just think that that's a part of the wires in the generator, you're not gonna really look at that and go, oh, that's a Valkyrie camera, you know what I mean? I am on ultra settings too, so it does look a little bit clearer, but for most people, they're on low settings, so they're never gonna see that Valkyrie camera. You can also pair that camera up with a nitro cell from below right here, so when you see them sprinting across to the CC rack on the camera all the way right here, you can wait about two seconds and then blow up the nitro cell, getting yourself a free kill onto anybody planting right there. But that's pretty much it for today's video. If you liked this video, check out this next video I just put on screen, and I hope I'll see you there. My name's Alka, and I'll see you later.